I'm about to tell you two things about Duke basketball, the first of which you already know, and that is that this version of the Blue Devils is the most culturally relevant sports team in recent memory, and I have numbers to prove that. Eight of the ten highest-rated games on ESPN this season have involved Duke. They draw, on average, 63% more viewers than other college basketball games. Here's further. SeatGeek tells us that ticket prices for Duke road games this year increased by 178% from the average. That's nearly triple the cost. And Vivid Seat says the get-in price tonight at Cameron is more than three times what it cost to go to Game 1 of the World Series at Fenway last fall. So you are into these guys, which makes me the bearer of bad news. Because history says they aren't going to win the national championship. This team has two fatal flaws. The first is perimeter shooting. They are 31% from three. No team has ever shot the three that poorly and won the title. And they put the three-point shot into college in 1986. In fact, Duke actually shoots at just 25% against the zone, so they are especially susceptible to that. So that's fatal flaw number one. The second fatal flaw is what they call scoring concentration, okay? 52% of their points come from R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson. No team in the last 50 years has won the title with more than half of its scoring coming from just two players. So here is my advice. Enjoy this while it lasts. It should certainly be fun tonight. But bear in mind, Coach K's team this year is not looking to make history. It is looking to rewrite it. And I want to give credit where it is due. My friend Jalen Rose has been saying all year long that those were the fatal flaws. So Hembo and I went and looked up the numbers, and there you have them. Let's start with their inability to shoot the ball from the perimeter, particularly from three and particularly against a zone. In what way do you exploit that if you're the opposing team? Well, first and foremost, if you don't play zone, you can't turn the basketball over. You want them to always go against a set defense. Next, you want to take away their layups and dunks. And sometimes you got to exaggerate it. You know how LeBron James did when he's playing against Ben Simmons? Yeah. How he just flagrantly went into the paint? You got to kind of do things like that to kind of get into a player's psyche. And also, they have three guys that are going to go in the top 10 in the draft. We talk about Zion, we talk about RJ. Cam Reddish is actually a shooter. Right. Get him more opportunities if you're the Duke Blue Devils. But for the opponent, you want to limit his opportunity. Again, 31% against the, or 31 from three for Duke this year. No team has ever won the championship shooting it that badly. And then you've been saying all year long, they depend too much on two guys. Maybe that brings you back to the Cam Reddish factor in all of this. If they get him going, maybe that alleviates their second fatal flaw. And Jones as well. Like, this is an anomaly because Duke have three, four of the top 15 players all on the same team at the same time. But two players have clearly distinguished themselves as the aggressor. Their usage is really high. So for the other guys, it's about trying to get them involved earlier in the game to create a level of balance. That's something that they have not been consistently doing, and it's something that they have not needed to do because they've been so dominant. Again, in no team in the last 50 years has won the championship with two guys scoring more than half their points. So it's not a question of whether or not they need to get those guys going. They absolutely have to get someone besides those two going if they're going to win the championship.